Choi. Let's start at the bottom. The first fight is Kyung Hyo Kang versus Gudo Katini. And Gudo, you know, to me, he's just okay. I feel like he's kind of just good everywhere, but not great. I feel like Kyung Ho Kang is the same, but I think he's going to have the size, reach, and power advantage in this fight. I think he's also bigger overall. So I'm just going to pick him to win. I know he was in Korea for that. They have mandatory two-year uh, military thing, so he wasn't hurt. So he was probably just training and getting better, and I think we're going to see an improve uh, Ho Kang, and he's probably going to win by knockout or submission. Next is Mike Santiago versus Mads Burnell. And... To me, Mads looks like he's a really good jiu-jitsu guy with a little bit of striking, but I just feel like he doesn't have amazing wrestling, and I think if this fight stays standing, I think Santiago's got a big advantage. This is what I see happening. I think Santiago's takedown defense is going to hold up, and his conditioning is, and his uh, combination striking is going to get him this fight. I think he's going to eventually get Mads up against the fence and just beat him up until he eventually wins by knockout or TKO. So I got Mike Santiago. Next is Daniel Taylor versus J.J. Aldrich, and to me, J.J.'s just okay. I feel like Daniel Taylor is a really good striker with really good takedown defense. I feel like, you know, J.J.'s just kind of a little bit of everything, but she's not amazing anywhere. I think as long as Daniel keeps this fight standing, she should win this fight by decision, probably 30-27 on all cards. Next is Tatiana versus Aldini. I have a hard time with a couple of these chicks' names, but I'm going to go with... Um, uh, for Aldini, I think she she's the one who's 7-4, and four, I'm checking, I'm pretty sure she is. She's a good striker, I think she's had two really close fights in the UFC, she lost both of them, but she is a really good striker, and like I said, she's had two really close losses, and I feel like they're trying to give her a win, so I'm going to pick Aldini, I say she wins by either TKO or decision. Next is Ferreira versus Jessica I, and I feel like this is, once again, I feel like they're feeding the good fighter. I think Jessica I is getting an easy fight for her first fight at 125. I think Jessica I is going to win this fight pretty easily, maybe even win by knockout, and uh, just get ranked in the top 15 for the new weight class. So I got Jessica I. Next is Tiago Alves versus Zach Cummings, and to me, this is really tough because Tiago Alves hasn't looked amazing recently. I mean, he beat Patrick Ote, but I feel like that kind of favored him. You know, I thought he was a little past his prime going into that fight, but he still has some gas in the tank. But I feel like if Zach Cummings gets this fight to the ground, he's going to dominate it. I feel like he's just a lot bigger, and I think that Thiago Alves is getting older, and his ability to stuff takedowns and get back up is not what it used to be. I think striking-wise, Thiago Alves definitely has an advantage, and if he can keep it there, he'll probably win. But I just don't see that happening. I think Zach's going to eventually clinch with him. Beat him up against the fence a little bit, get the takedowns, and eventually win by submission like he usually does. Like He usually gets second and third round finishes, and that's what I see happening. I think Zach's going to win by submission with like an arm triangle or something in the second or third round. Next is Matt Florio versus uh, Marco Polo Reyes. And to me, this is just two kind of stand-up guys, but I feel like Polo Reyes has the advantage. I think that... Um, you know, even though he lost his last fight to James Vick, I think we've seen in most of his fights, he's got a really good chin, he's a really good brawler, his striking's getting more technical, and I just think he's got more power. So I think Polo Ray is going to keep this fight on the feet and just outstrike Matt for the most of the fight and eventually win by knockout or TKO. Next is James Krause versus Alex White, and to me, Alex White is super inconsistent. He's very win-lose, win-lose, and he has a lot of finish losses on his record. As where James Krause has really only been finished one time, and then that one time against Bobby Green, he got kicked in the balls, kind of. So I feel like James Krause is super consistent. I feel like if this fight hits the ground, he's going to have a big advantage, too. I think striking-wise, Alex is a little bit more technical. I think James has the reach, though, but once again, I think sooner or later, James will be able to clinch with Alex and get him to the ground, and once it's down there, I think he's going to have a big advantage, so I'm going to pick James Krause. I say he wins by, like, second round running a choke. Next, we got Darren Elkins versus Michael Johnson, and this fight is just tough because I don't know how Michael Johnson is going to look at 45. I feel like his takedown defense is amazing, and against somebody like Darren Elkins, he'll probably be able to shuck him off for most of the takedowns if his conditioning holds up, which you don't know, cutting that much weight how he's going to look, because it wasn't like he was a super small 55-er. I mean, he was a little small, but it wasn't ridiculous. So, I mean, I think this is just going to... This is one of those fights where it's really going to depend on how much the weight affects him, and it's hard to tell because I've never seen him fight this weight before. But once again, I think if Elkins can kind of get him up against the fence, and if Elkins does get this to the ground, whether he's on top or bottom, I think he's got a big advantage. I think his jiu-jitsu is way better. His jiu-jitsu offense is way better than Michael Johnson's jiu-jitsu defense. And I think that's what Elkins needs to do. Just fight like how he always fights. Don't strike with him. Just clinch with him. You know, grind him out against the fence. Whether he's, you know, winning or losing. As long as they're in a grappling situation. Like against Bersad Bektik. 
just wear him down, eventually win by submission, and that's what I think is going to happen. I think eventually Elkins is going to wear Michael Johnson down and win by submission, probably in like the third round. Next is Kamar Usman versus Emil Weberbeek, and this fight makes absolutely no fucking sense to me. It's like, Emil Weberbeek, you know, he's like 1-0 in the UFC, he came in at like 8-2, he had that one decent win against uh, Paul Harris outside the UFC, and he has that one good win in the UFC against um, I can't remember his name, the Canadian guy. And it's like they want to feed, him, they want to throw him in against Kamar Usman, and it's like unless there's something they're seeing that I don't see, I feel like what's gonna happen this fight is what happens in every Carmen Usman fight. He's just gonna get him against the fence, take him down, and beat him up. I mean, I know in Usman's last two fights he's been striking more, but realistically, if he wanted to, I feel like the takedown is there whenever he wants it, and he can do what he always does in most of his fights, which is just get the guy on the ground, continuously beat him up and tire him out until he eventually wins by submission, and that's what I think is going to happen. I mean, I don't know Emil Weberbeek's wrestling background, but I'm pretty fucking sure it's not as good as Usman's offensive wrestling, and that's what we see happening. Unless he catches him with some big shot and gets really lucky, I think that Usman's the better fighter overall. I mean, striking-wise, Beek's probably the better striker, but I really don't think that's going to matter. I think the wrestling is just too lopsidedly in favor of Usman to matter. So I'm going to pick Usman. I say he wins by submission in the first or second round, just with the wrestling. Next is Paige Van, Van Zandt versus Jessica Clark. And to me, they're just feeding Paige Van Zandt a really easy win. The only way Paige Van Zandt loses this fight is if she does that technical striking shit. I mean, she'll still probably win the fight that way, but I'm just saying, I feel like a lot of the fights where she fights like that, which she's been doing more recently, they've been a lot closer. I feel like her biggest strength is wrestling and ground and pound, kind of like Usman, but like a chick version of that, where she's constantly pushed pressures on guy, peak girls, and takes them down and beats them up, and when they try to get back up, she just takes them down again. She hasn't been doing that as much. I think she needs to go back to it. I, I don't know why you want to fight away from your strengths. You know, she's obviously not the greatest technical striker ever. Her strength is... You know, grinding on people, beating them up, and tying them out, and then finishing them with ground and pound. Um, I'm still going to pick Paige Van Zandt. I think she's just better everywhere. And as long as she keeps a brawlery and, you know, dirty and uh, an exhausting fight, she should win this fight really easily and probably win by TKO in the third. Next, we got Uriah Hall versus Vitor Belfort. And this fight depends entirely on whoever lands the big shot first. Both these guys are super inconsistent. You know, I think they've both gone like 1-3 in three in their last four. They both won their last fight, but I think they were both on like two or three fight losing streaks before that, and they were both getting finished quite a bit. The I would pick Yara Hall if he would wrestle a little bit more, but there's no way he's going to try to take Vitor down. I mean, that would be the biggest shock of the night, is if Uriah Hall took down Vitor Belfort. The fact that he's going to strike with him means that he could go either way, because of how inconsistent he is with the striking. I feel like there's times where he does amazing shit, but for the most part, he's just kind of this low output striker who just tries to set up big crap that doesn't always land. I think that if Vitor can time it right, he can win by knockout. And vice versa, I think Gary Hall is younger and faster, and he could definitely win by knockout. But I just feel like it, this really is just who lands that big shot first, and I'm going to lean towards Vitor. I just feel like because it's just the punches with him, there's a more likely shot that he's going to land it, and I think he's just faster with the hands. And like I said, just whoever lands that big shot first is going to win, and I think that's entirely what this is because neither of these guys are very consistent. But I'm just leaning towards Vitor. And finally, we got Jeremy Stevens versus Duho Choi. And to me, unless Duho Choi wins in the first round or second with like a big punch, I think the longer this fight goes, the stronger it's gonna, the, the heavier it's gonna fav favor Jeremy Stevens. I feel like Jeremy Stevens is a guy who keeps the same pace throughout three rounds, and he has this very, you know, he's consistently moving forward, so he's not using as much energy as the other guy is. You know, Duho Choi likes to counter strike, so there is a chance that he could knock him out. But I'm just saying, I feel like we saw it when he fought Cub. If you can't, if he can't knock the guy out, eventually the guys wear him out, and you know he didn't get knocked out. But I think that what's going to happen is he's probably going to win the first two rounds, and then Jeremy will win the next two, and maybe get a fifth round finish from like TKO, ground and pound, or something like that. Like I said, unless Duho Choi catches him really early, which I don't think is going to happen, I think it's going to go either the distance or close to the distance. And I got Jeremy Stevens winning three of the five rounds. I think it, this could be an amazing fight unless somebody gets knocked out in the first, which is a possibility that could happen. Like Jeremy Stevens could knock him out in the first two. I just feel like Duho Choi is more likely to knock him out in the first because he's faster. But I'm just going to lean towards Jeremy Stevens winning by decision or a very late fourth or fifth round TKO. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.